All right, let's see if I can record this in the right landscape. We got uh, we got all four bolts removed now. We got the passenger side front and rear. And we got the driver side front and rear. This is the tube I was talking about in my first two videos. So basically, inside the frame, one of these bolts, oh, it's wedged under there, sits in. like that you know and then there's a there's a cap on top of this that's welded over and that stops the bolt from turning and from moving up and down inside the frame my concern though is that people online are saying you go in through the side on a spider to drop these in because there's a, a bracket um, a bracing on the inside of the uh, of the car I come over here to my spider which is full of shit. Um, so behind here, uh, actually roughly behind right here, would be where it would need to go. Uh, but the, the bracing that for this top, you know, to help keep the, the car from moving up and down, runs straight up and down from here. Uh, and there's pics of that online, and you know, like I said, usually people say they go in from the inside of the wheel well. And I'll show you where the actual hole is. This side's pretty cut up this one actually fought me pretty bad to get out this is the one i tried to cut in from the side and it mangled that bracket so i had to make a pretty big hole with the sawzall to get it out now what guys are saying is that they come in from this side and they just drop the bolt down uh, but if there's those tubes are in there then there's no way you could do that if the tubes aren't in there then the bolt's sitting way too low uh, so i'm a little confused there and you can see that side took some cutting too these two i did with uh a combination of the sawzall and the um, the cutoff wheel. The problem with the cutoff wheel is you can't really get close to the edges here. Uh, you can't really, you know, the the shield on the cutoff wheel really stops you from getting too far in there. And the sawzall's limitation is that it bangs into shit inside the frame, and, uh, and then it bends the blade, and the blade turns to junk real quick. And again, I mangled this up pretty bad because this is the parts donor, and I wanted to see, you know, really how far we could go. Um, the front two I was a little more careful with. I used a hole saw on the one uh, and I used mainly the cutoff wheel on the other. Um, but you saw those in the first two videos if you watched them. And uh, the, so the circular saw, the uh, hole saw, is the uh, cleanest, I would say, as far as cuts go. Let's see if you can still see it in there. This thing does not have much assist. You know, that made the cleanest cut. You see the cutoff piece here. Uh, the problem I have is the, you know, the, uh, the area is uneven, and so the saw blade wants to catch, and then it wants to twist and tear up the bushings on your, on your drill, the drill bit, sorry. The hole saw wants to catch, and, you know, and it just knocks back and forth. It tears up the, br the brushes in your drill, um, and I've actually snapped drills in half doing that uh, for my front mount. Uh, so I, I don't necessarily think that that would be e the easiest tool to use. Everyone always says I'm just going to use a hole saw, including me, when they read this. Uh, everyone I've talked to about the project says I would just use a hole saw. And the hole saw out now did not work. So that's why no one uses a hole saw. Uh, <laughs> the next tool was off wheel and again the cutoff wheels limitation and a lot of the, the bending and twisting you're seeing here is from using a pry bar when I'm done to uh, pry that uh, top piece off of this tube again there's there's a bracket that gets welded onto here so when you cut off there's still a big thick piece of bracket here you got to cut it and you know, try to pry it off and move it back and forth enough to pull the bolt out uh, but the cutoff wheel here made a small cut you know or a smaller cut and that was uh, easier to work with. Up there, you know, I was being a lot less cautious, mainly just because I wanted to be done. It's getting pretty hot. But, uh, you know, uh, it, altogether, it's not too hard to get the bolts out. You know, the confusing part is going to be putting them back in in a way that's going to be easy to fix and weld shut. Um, and again, that one has the extra hole in the side where I, I cut initially thinking I would go in through the sides to get them to kind of give myself a practice run for cutting into the uh, the side of the frame on the the final car where I'm intending to go in from the side weld it shut 
so you don't have to deal with cutting out braces, but it, it's looking like I may have to cut the braces and go from the top. Uh, all in all, the top is way easier to cut through. Uh, this, the sheet metal is, is way thinner. You know, this is just like 16, I think 16 gauge steel, um, if that. And down here, you know, you're dealing with multiple layers of steel. Uh, so here, if you look here, these are two layers that are plated together, but not evenly throughout. And that causes the same problem with the hole saw where it wants to uh, catch on one layer and not on the other. So it's spinning very easily over here and not at all over here. The end result is that the blade wants to shake and knock about and it's rough on your drill. Uh, this one I did uh, with a cutoff wheel and a pry bar pulled back. You can see again, there's a couple layers here. Uh, one of the layers actually broke off on this side, dropped off. Um, if I were going from the outside, from the sides, and looking for a way that's easy to weld up, this would probably be the way to go. Use the cutoff wheel, pry back what you have to, push it flat, weld it shut. Uh, the the whole saw, you know, what it, what it gives you in simplicity and in speed as far as pushing in and out and getting a nice even cut, uh, you lose in accuracy. You know, this one's real big. Clearly I hit a brace. Uh, that brace is actually the, the tube that I didn't know was there. But, you know, if you're hitting into a brace, now your whole cut's worthless and you're back to using a saw anyway. So I, I think, in all honesty, my favorite tool for this job uh, was probably the cutoff wheel. And when it was working, the uh, the Sawzall was a lot better. I didn't like the whole saw at all. Um, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, guys. That's, that was my experience. Good luck.